Hey everybody, happy Independence Day. I wanted to come on and say happy 4th of July and um, reach out. I am just finishing up the last leg of my vacation and then I will be home and we will resume our weekly readings. I can't wait. <laughs> this has been an amazing and incredible um, vacation, but you know how it is after two weeks, it's gonna be really good to be home. I actually wanted to come on here and talk about Independence Day and kind of what it means to me. Um, I've been all over the world. As you knew, I grew up in Egypt and in the Middle East. Um, I also spent a few years in Morocco. I've been able to see um, parts of Europe and I've been uh, to China. I mean, there's been a lot of places I've been as a young person, younger person, I'm still young. And um, regardless of what's happening in this country, much of it is extremely concerning to me. I still love this country so much. Um, it's, it's the only place I can think of where I would have been able to thrive and flourish in the way that I have. So um, I wanted to share a little bit of what that story is and my own, I guess when I came into my own independence. Um, many of you know I was a poor single mother in my early 20s. I was a teen, teen mother and um, survived on welfare and um, pretty much the kindness of others. And, you know, when you're in that place and you're trying to manage your money and you're young and I didn't even know how to balance a checkbook back then or do a lot of the stuff that a lot of adults know how to do, um, I really struggled. But I, I knew one thing. Um, sorry about the neighbor's dogs. I think I started talking and they're like all upset now. Um, I knew that there was going to come in a time in my life where I wasn't going to be a handout. I wanted to be a hand up. And my Independence Day happened years before I actually experienced independence in the way that I have it today. Um, I was very young, probably not even 20 yet. Maybe I was 20. Yeah, because my little, my little guy was two years old back then. He's 22 now, can you believe it? And um, I remember there was this particular night where um, I was counting the rest of our money that we had for the month, and I had $2 left to my name. And um, I didn't know what we were going to do the next day. I knew that with those $2, we were going to walk over to the McDonald's and eat off the dollar menu. Um, and then the next day I was just going to try to figure it out. It was like total survival. I don't know if you guys have ever been in that position or if you know somebody who has, but it's extremely terrifying. And on our way over to the McDonald's with our $2, I saw a man who was begging on the street with a, a sign. And I remember thinking, um, that's going to be me like tomorrow if, if something doesn't change. And I really studied him. I looked at this man and, um, I could just sense even back then that, that this man, something about him just expected to be there. Like he, he accepted that that was his life. And I, I was just so not wanting to live that way. And something occurred to me in that moment, um, in, in my refusal to, to do that. I thought if I gave this man a dollar, then somehow I would be the hand up. You know, I could position myself somehow as not the beggar, but the person that was giving to the beggar, even though I'm, I'm, I'm there, right? So I decided to give this man half of everything I had, which was a dollar. Took my son over to the dollar menu. He ate, I didn't, went to bed starving. It sucked. It was one of the worst nights of my life. My body hurt, my head hurt, my heart hurt. Um, and I prayed so hard that night. And I had a conversation with the universe that was extremely real and raw. It went something like, I don't even know who you are. I don't know who I am, but I need some help. And today I put my foot down as someone who is the handout. I don't want to take anymore. I don't want to be another statistic. I don't want to live on welfare. I want to be something better. I don't even know what, but I want to be something better. And so um, the next morning I woke up and I always tell this story like this. What happened next, to me, a lot of people would have said, 
would say that it was a miracle what happened next. But um, to me, I think the miracle happened that night when I prayed for, for hours and hours on end and um, made some real big decisions about who I wanted to be. That was the miracle because I could have easily gone right into that victim mode in my mind and I could have made my sign that next day and sat right next to that beggar on the side of the road. I absolutely could have done that. So when I woke up the next morning, um, I opened up my front door thinking I was going to go look for change. And instead, I tripped over a bunch of stuff. Stuff that wasn't there before. And I looked down and I saw all these grocery bags, like tons of them. And I thought, oh, someone's left their groceries at my door. And I looked around and it was pretty early. It was like five in the morning. I was gonna try to go look for change before my son woke up. And then I realized that those groceries were for me. That someone somewhere had seen me struggling and decided to be an angel. There's no doubt in my mind that the night before God spoke to someone and they listened and they followed through. And now you know why I love to talk about that, about listening to your intuition, about following through with the impulses that you have because somebody listened to their impulse and they made the biggest difference in my life. I put away those groceries that morning and it was good stuff, you know, like stuff that you don't think that people run out of when they're really poor, like toilet paper and toothpaste. And it may have well have been a million dollars because what I got out of that was a sense of faith that I had never had. Now it took me a long time to go to school and work my jobs and, and, and climb out of the statistic that I was becoming. It wasn't like after that miracle that, you know, the, the, the road was paved with gold, but it, but I had something that I didn't have before. And that was a deep sense of something bigger than me that was for me that would show up through other people and other circumstances. And that was the day that I became an independent person. Yes, I did stay in the system for years after. Yes, I did take a long time to get to, to get where I am today. And today I feel completely independent. And let me tell you what that means to me. What I'm celebrating today is not only our beautiful country's independence and, and the prayers for something better to happen in our country, because I know that we're better than this. But I'm celebrating my independence as this. I know that my provider is God. There's no reason why I should be this successful and, and be making the money that I have and be providing for my children in the way that I do. It is really by the grace of God. And I really had to, to surrender my life to him. And I am a servant to that. Everything that I do and everything that I am is dedicated to helping people become connected to something higher than themselves so that they can have their own inner miracles so that they can see the result of those inner miracles just like I did. So today I celebrate the part of you that is independent, that, that does know how to take a stand and help the people around you that can channel God's love in a way that would make a huge difference in someone's life. The person that left those groceries on my doorstep years ago has no idea the impact that they made and who they created from that one action. So as we all gather together today to celebrate in whatever way that you feel necessary, let your heart be free. Let your heart be brave and let your connection be strong. Happy 4th.